Okay, so in the first part of this video, which is already uploaded on our channel, we have discussed um, some important details which would be required for these questions. These questions are basically the entry test sample questions which are related to the topic groups and logic. So I'll share the screen. All right, so in the previous part, I have discussed some tables which are important for these questions, right? I have given a detailed idea of how these questions would be solved using these tables. So as I said earlier as well, uh, you have to learn these tables, okay? If you want to solve logic questions, you have to learn these tables. And if you are um, a Cambridge student, like if you are in A level, so obviously I know that you guys must not be familiar with this already. So just learn this table. And in this video, I am going to tell you that how the, these tables would be used, okay? So let's get started. All right, so the very first question says, now these questions are sample questions for the entry test exams, which are related to groups and logic. All right, so the very first question says, which binary operation is not defined in the set of natural numbers, right? So here the discussion basically begins with binary operations, right? Now, what is binary operation? Let's say I have two numbers, x and y. Now, this static right here is my binary operation and x and y are two numbers, right? So let's say I have um, one, one is x and binary operation is plus and y is two. So this is going to give me three. Now, the important thing about binary operation is that we need to think of our set as well. Now, if I am saying that this should be defined in the set of natural numbers, right? So get the question now. For now, just know that we're talking about binary operation and natural numbers. So obviously, if we have one plus two equals three, this three should belong to natural numbers, right? So this operation should be closed in the set. By closed, I mean, that whatever answer I get by adding these two numbers or by applying the binary operation, since here the binary operation was of addition, I get three, then this number should belong to the set, right? So this is what we know, uh, what, this is what we do and what we have in binary operation, right? Now, the question here is, which binary operation is not defined in the set of natural numbers, all right. So I said that the condition which we follow for binary operation is that it should be closed in that set, right? If I talk about subtraction and I'm talking about natural numbers, right? So it is going to be uh, this way, A minus B equals C. Now to define this in the set of natural numbers, the important condition is that A B and C should be in the set of natural numbers, right? Now, let's say I say I take A as 4 and I take B as 6. And I can certainly do that because like 4 and 6 are in natural numbers and I get minus 2. Now, obviously, minus 2 does not belong to the set of natural numbers. So this means that subtraction cannot be defined in the set of natural numbers because the set of natural numbers begins with a one and then we have like um, two, three, four and so on, right? So we do not have any negative numbers here. So we have one, we have two and so on, but we do not have any negative numbers. So minus two is not in natural numbers, since the C is not a natural number, it means that this subtraction is not closed in natural numbers, right? So uh, clearly, the binary operation which is not defined instead of natural numbers is subtraction. B is the answer. All right. I'll give a quick example. If, if here, if we consider multiplication, like the C option, I take 4 multiplied by 6, I get 24. 
So this does belong to natural numbers. I know that if I'm taking any two numbers from the set of natural numbers, I would get the answer in natural numbers because like the product of any two positive integers is going to be a positive integer that is a natural number, right? And same goes for addition. So clearly subtraction minus is not defined. So B is the answer, right? Okay. Now let's talk about the second question. Okay. Second question says, to each element of a group, there correspond how many inverse elements, right? So if we talk about groups, we should know that like in a group, we have a binding operation, right? So uh, again, the same uh, condition holds that if we have a binding operation, the group should be closed according to that binding operation. Like if I have two numbers and I'm applying the binding operation, so the third number which I'm getting as a result should be in that group, right? Then the second condition is that uh, it should have the inverse of all elements, okay? And then the fourth condition is that we should have the identity element as well, right? So I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what a group is. But again, we will discuss all this in detail in our classes. These videos are only... Uh, for past paper questions, but still I am giving reference to some, you know, topics which are important, just so you guys are also able to understand things well. All right, so now they're talking about the um, inverse elements, right? So um, in a group, we have different elements. For every element, we have one inverse only, okay? So it is a property. For every element, we just have one inverse. So it's only one, right? A is the answer. All right. Now we have the third question, which says, the truth value of the proposition three is a positive number. Three is a positive number or two plus two equals seven. All right. Now let's just write down this English uh, in logical statement that, um, we have or, so I will have P or Q. And here basically you will see uh, how to use those tables, okay? So we have P union Q, of uh, union, it's, it's, it's basically union in sets, but here we are talking about the logical statement. So it would be or, right? For or we write this. Now P is that T is, a positive number that certainly is or q is that 2 plus 2 equals 7 right now p statement which says that 3 is positive is actually true right and the q statement which basically says that 2 plus 2 is 7 is false now we need an answer for this we need an answer for this so let's go in the table and see if P is true and Q is false, what do we get, right? All right, so first thing is that this would be in the disjunction table because we have OR here. This is OR. Now P was true and Q is false, right? P was true and Q is false. So P or Q would be true, right? If one of the statements is true, the result would be true. So here, the answer would be A because like one statement is true, right? So clearly um, we have seen how to apply these tables. 